All right, Forest fans, Max Noon here on Talk Forest TV, giving you a quick preview of Nottingham Forest at home to Brighton and Hove Albion. Um, you know, Brighton, everybody's darlings towards the end of last season and the start of this season, everybody giving it deserve this, deserve that. Actually, I think he's been found out, and I think Brighton have been found out. They're not all the cracks up to be. They're a good to decent, decent to good side. Um, had a good run. Um, you know, they've got some good players. But he's not. He's not the next. Um, he's not the next Brian Clough. He's not the next uh, Guardiola. Do you know what I mean? He's. I think um, people are just getting a little bit too excited about how amazing De Zerbi is. Um, you know what Steve Cooper's done at Forest is equally as good, if not better, than what De Zerbi has done at Brighton. Because let's face it, Graham Potter um, did a great job before him. And it's the system that the club have uh, have put together to recruit and develop players that is why they're successful. And I think that means that, um, you know, looking at the game, um, it's difficult to pick out individual players to to watch out for, to be the, the difficult players. Um, I mean, I like that with Toma. I like Ferguson up front, but, you know, they could play a completely different side to what anybody's expecting and still play the same system, and which is controlling the ball, keeping the ball, and uh, and then attacking with pace at the right moment. So Forrest will need to have um, 100% concentration. Um, we'll probably need to be happy with not having the ball as much as we'd like, um, even in this sort of new um, possession-based uh, football uh philosophy that we have this season um and you know play like we did when we beat them at the city ground gloriously towards the back end of last season um we're gonna have to do so without Taiwei, which is a massive blow um because i think he's just with every game he plays you know i think it just becomes more and more obvious what uh what a talent he is and what value he brings to to any football side but chris wood has got excellent goals per minute average so far this season and has stepped up when it's counted when he's needed to this season and, and made you know made his minutes count. Um also time for Divock, big Divock to get in on the act. I liked what I saw when he came on towards the end of the West Ham game. Um and I think probably a, apart from that we might see the you know one of those two playing instead of Big T. Um and probably then the same pretty much the same you know expected side. Um, maybe we we'll wait on Murillo, and if Murillo is not fit, I think we see um Bolly and Nikate play at the back. <clears throat> Excuse me. I think um, yeah, we we see we see the the team that we we would expect. A different way that Stevie Cooper might go is by um, uh, not playing with an out and out centre forward and playing Morgan Gibbs White as a false nine, which I think um you know there's a lot to be said for that, including Morgan Gibbs White being in the centre of the pitch where. He um he can do more damage and he can be more creative. And I think we saw that the centre of the pitch, you know, the middle of the pitch, the spine was where he did his best work last season. So you know, I'd be good to see see Morgan play there because I think that's where we get the best out of him. Um and uh yeah, hopefully we've uh, had lovely cheese and beetroot cobs at half time. And we come away with the three points to put us further and further away from, from the relegation spots, which are now occupied uh, by Everton as well as the others. And um, yeah, I just want to say, I think there's a lot of Everton, ex-Everton players, Liverpool pundits. You know, there's a lot of uh, the media love Everton all making comments on the situation without any knowledge or insight or really being aware of the facts. Claiming that you know Everton fully cooperated with the 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 Premier League and the inquiry, they didn't. They changed the story with two weeks to go. Um, claiming that oh, it's just about um, uh, interest rates on the stadium. It's not. They cheated. They bought players when they shouldn't have been doing so, because um, you know they they rode rough shod shod over the um, financial fair play rules and the the maximum amount that you're allowed to lose, and that's how they got. Mikalenko and uh, a number of other, one of the about half dozen number tens that they bought. So um, yeah, don't don't buy it. What you're hearing from Everton and the fans and from from the media, uh, everybody's known for the last three years that they they've been cheating to stay up and they deserve to go down. And so hopefully they do, and uh, hopefully um, go down with uh, Burnley and Sheffield United. Um, but let's concentrate on Forest. 
big game, big opportunity. But you know what? Let's not get too excited if we win and let's not get too down if we lose. Because, you know, what really we're aiming for this season is mid-table, maybe pushing up. Um, and teams that finish mid-table, maybe pushing up, have uh, games that they win that they probably should have drawn or lost. And they have games that they lost that they probably should have won or drawn. And they have, um, you know, inconsistent results. That's the nature of the beast. And that's where we are at the moment. And that's better, frankly, than um, expecting defeat with every game and having long runs of defeat. Um, so let's get behind the boys. Let's get those scarves held aloft from Mullah Kintyre. Let's enjoy our cheese and beetroot cobs. Come on, you Reds.